As the economy slumps from the MERS outbreak, the Bank of Korea lowered the benchmark interest rate to a record low 1.5 percent per year. Fewer schools will close over the MERS outbreak in coming days as the Gyeonggi Provincial Office of Education has decided not to extend its collective closures. And due to the severe drought, Han River dams are operating on emergency mode, while other hydroelectric dams are even assisting to supply water. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Friday, June 12th. I'm Luke Clary. Public jitters continue to rise over the outbreak of the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome as more cases are confirmed. We take a look on the possibility of airborne transmission of the disease. Viruses mostly spread in three ways. Droplet infection, aerosol transmission and airborne transmission. Droplet infections refer to saliva droplets of patients spreading the virus. Saliva droplets are rather heavy and reach about 2 meters before subsiding. They are the key route of infection for closely contacted people. Aerosol is created when dry droplets are split into pieces. They are fairly light and able to spread to other hospital rooms carried by air conditioning wind or due to difference in atmospheric pressure. Aerosol transmission affects a limited number of people in an indoor space. Now, airborne transmission occurs when the virus contained in ultrafine droplets, far tinier than aerosol, roams around the air and infects an indiscriminate amount of people. Experts believe that if MERS is spread through the air, thousands of patients should have occurred at the Samsung Medical Center, where daily visitors number some 20,000. 직접 접촉에 의한 전파 경로가 분명하게 파악이 안, 될, 안 되었을 뿐이지 공기 전파의 가능성은 어, 거의 없다 이렇게 말씀드리겠습니다. Other facts also show that airborne transmission of MERS is very unlikely. Infections among family members were under 5% in Saudi Arabia and not yet a single case reported in Korea. The Bank of Korea has again lowered its benchmark interest rate to a record low of 1.5 percent per year. The rate adjustment is likely to be followed by additional government measures to revive the sagging economy hit by the MERS outbreak. However, concerns are mounting over Korea's ballooning household debts. The biggest concern for the Bank of Korea is that the country's slowly recovering consumption may again be dampened by the MERS outbreak. With Korea's exports declining for the fifth straight month, sluggish spending could make it impossible for Korea to achieve a 3% growth this year. However, not many expect a moderate drop in the interest rate to substantially boost spending and exports. Demands have risen for the government to relax its fiscal spending to encourage consumption, and the government has actually started examining the option of executing additional budgets. But the problem is that record low interest rates made it harder to rein in Korea's ballooning household debts, which have increased roughly $10 billion in just one month. Now that Korea has lowered its interest rate when the U.S. is expected to raise its own soon, Korea must also brace against a sudden exodus of foreign investment. The Gyeonggi Provincial Office of Education has decided not to extend the collective closure of schools in the province previously sent through Friday. Now, fewer schools are expected to close over the MERS outbreak in the coming days. The Gyeonggi Provincial Office of Education has decided not to extend school closures into next week. This comes as the Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education decided to extend school shutdowns. 수업 일수, 수업 시수 등 수업 결손에 따른 교육과정 운영상의 어려움을 해결하기 위한 불가피한 조치입니다. Schools in southern Gyeonggi province, including kindergartens and elementary, middle and high schools that were closed from last Monday, will reopen next week. The Daejeon Metropolitan Office of Education earlier halted school closures on Wednesday.
the number of school closures nationwide had been on the rise until now. The figure marked its first drop on Thursday. It's nine days after the first school closures began on June 2nd. Experts say there's no need to extend the school closures. The World Health Organization has also advised to resume classes. This weekend is expected to be a critical time to assess the spread of MERS and could mark a return to normalization for schools across the nation. Prime Minister nominee Huang Yuan faces a long road ahead to his confirmation as parliamentary procedures continue. The hearing report should be handed in by Friday for a general vote, but the rival parties are at loggerheads about his nomination. The ruling Senduri Party claimed that Korea urgently needs a prime minister who can oversee MERS response and said that it would hold a general meeting to unilaterally pass the nomination. The opposing New Politics Alliance for Democracy countered that not a single allegation has been explained beyond a doubt. Secretaries of the Special Committee on the Confirmation Hearing met yesterday to discuss the adoption of a confirmation hearing report before the vote at the General Assembly, but succeeded only in highlighting their glaring differences. Political analysts project that a compromise is likely to be reached early next week, as the political risk would be too great if the ruling party approves of Huang's nomination by itself. But the opposition camp can't afford to drag out the issue in the midst of the MERS crisis. The severe drought is not expected to let up anytime soon, and dams on the Han River Basin have shifted into emergency mode. Now, for the first time in history, dams used for generating electricity are assisting to supply water. The present situation at multi-purpose dams on the Han River system is pretty bleak. Water storage rates have plunged to 27% at Soyang River Dam and 23% at Chungju Dam, both the lowest levels since the dams were built. The water supply to prevent streams from drying up has long been suspended. Now the water supply for agricultural use is on the verge of being cut off. The government has employed emergency measures to deal with the worsening dry spell. Power generating dams, such as the ones in Hwacheon and Chuncheon, are being used to help supply water. An additional 4.3 million tons of water will be discharged from four power generating dams, while discharge levels from the Soyang River Dam will be reduced. The strategy is to delay the draining of the Soyang River Dam as much as possible. It's the first time ever that dams used for generating electricity are being used to supply water against the extreme drought. Despite the measures, if the drought continues through mid-July, options like suspending the water supply for agriculture and cutting down on residential water will need to be deliberated. The price of potatoes is already higher than usual due to hot selling potato chips, but further price hikes are expected because the ongoing drought has resulted in the worst potato harvest in history. A 70,000 square meter potato field appears dried up and lifeless. Only a few pea-sized potatoes dangle limply from the stems. 평년 같으면은 이게 여기 감자알이 요 정도씩 커야 되는데 지금 크지도 않고 지금 이렇게 줄기만 나와 있잖아요. 워낙 가무니까. The potato field hasn't been watered sufficiently because of the recent drought. Growth problems are seen in about 17% of the potato fields in Gangwon, North Gyeongsang, and Gyeonggi provinces, the top potato producing regions in Korea. 지금 현 상태로 6월을 넘어가게 되면은 그 전년 수준의 50% 이하로 생산량은 떨어질 거로 예상이 됩니다. The retail price for a kilogram of spring potatoes increased nearly 22% from previous years. Popular potato chips have driven up demand, which will further fuel the price hike of potatoes for some time. 
Some even forecast that potatoes may become as valuable as gold, as the country is experiencing one of the worst potato harvests in history. Authorities have arrested the CEO of a company that received loans amounting to 135 million U.S. dollars by exaggerating the export prices of its products by a factor in the tens of thousands. Banks that provided the loans were completely in the dark about the fraud until the customs authorities busted the company. Officials from the Korea Customs Service raid a firm that exports television components. The firm's document states plastic parts, which cost around 18 U.S. dollars, as special components costing 180,000 U.S. dollars apiece. The company fabricated its export documents to subscribe to export insurance provided by the Korea Trade Insurance Corporation and received loans from banks since 2010. When the loan's maturity dates approached, the firm used the same method to obtain new loans to repay the existing ones. It obtained over $135 million in loans from five banks more than 290 times. The firm's fraud snowballed as the Trade Insurance Corporation and the banks had no idea the submitted documents were fake. Plastic 1kg가 약 2.5kg 됐다는 거거든요. 그건 누가 봐도 이상하지 않습니까? The CEO of the firm has been arrested on charges of violating the Customs Act, while the banks are now facing damages amounting to millions of dollars as a result of their negligence in screening documents. Singer Bobby Kim has been ordered to pay a fine for throwing a drunken tantrum on a flight. Here's more from the world of show business. Actor Chung Jae-young will appear in his first TV show next month in the KBS TV2 Wednesday-Thursday drama Assembly. Assembly is a political drama about an honest welder who is elected as a member of the National Assembly and a female aide played by actress Song Yoon-ha. Singer Bobby Kim has been ordered to pay a $3,600 fine for throwing a drunken tantrum and sexually harassing a flight attendant on a U.S.-bound flight in January this year. The court also ordered Kim to receive 40 hours of sex crime prevention training. Korea-China idol group Times has released a new single album entitled Awaken concurrently in Korea and China, launching its activities in earnest. Times is a joint project of Korean and Chinese talent management firms. The team consists of two Korean and four Chinese members. Where you stay during your vacation can make a world of difference for many. Sometimes the lodging itself can become a tourist attraction. Today, we'll show you some unique accommodations that can make your vacation more special. This is an ecological park in Yeongdok known for its mountains, the sea, and the breezes. There's a tube-like structure that resembles a train car or a giant can. Well, this is where these visitors will be spending the night. Measuring a comfortable 22 square meters, the place is equipped with essential appliances as well as a kitchen and a bathroom. Located inside the ecological park, visitors can enjoy blooming flowers and even get on retired fighters and airplanes displayed inside the compound. 저희는 힐링하는 공간으로 오늘 최고의 장소를 뽑은 것 같아요. Next stop is a Hanok Hotel in Gyeonggi Province. The Korean traditional house was disassembled and relocated to the current site. Each component, from the pillars to the tiles, reassembled exactly in the architectural fashion of the Joseon era. Even the items inside the room demonstrate the care that went into decorating the traditional hotel. Its kitchens and bathrooms have been updated for the convenience of guests, all the while maintaining the traditional theme. There's even a room where guests can experience a fragrant steam bath, which Joseon era kings and queens are said to have enjoyed. Visitors can soak up the steam generated from boiling 16 different medicinal herbs in water. 
아름다운 경치를 보면서 훈육을 하니까 정말 왕비가 된 기분이에요. Today's last destination is Gomun Island, two and a half hours away from Yasu by boat. You're likely to spot a lighthouse at a distance after a 30-minute walk along a quiet path in the woods while enjoying the beautiful seascape. After walking up to the 33-meter lighthouse, you are greeted by an endless stretch of the vast South Sea. It's a view spectacular enough to erase the memory of a long, hard climb up the lighthouse stairs. After sunset, visitors can relax and gain peace of mind as they watch the lighthouse sending out a beam of light to the dark sea. 가족들과 함께하는 이 공간이 그리고 이 숙소가 너무 감사하고 멋진 추억으로 남을 것 같습니다. If you're tired of drab, run-of-the-mill motels and inns that are only good for sleeping, try visiting these unusual lodgings to make your trips more special and memorable. Now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.